This question is about redox, electrode potentials and feasibility. Table 22.1 shows standard electrode potentials for four redox systems. You need to use this information to answer the questions below. Part A. A standard cell is set up in the laboratory based on redox systems 2 and 3 and the standard cell potential is measured. Part 1. Draw a labelled diagram to show how this cell could be set up to measure its standard cell potential. Include details of the apparatus solutions and the standard conditions required to measure this standard cell potential. This is a very common question, so once I've shown you the correct answer, it's a good idea to make a revision resource and go back over this. So if we look at the question, we're using redox systems 1 and 3 and they involve zinc and iron. We would have to use a platinum electrode for the ion because the system is all aqueous, whereas we can use the zinc electrode because it's solid. So we would set it up with two beakers as shown. We would then have two electrodes and we would have platinum and then iron 2 plus and iron 3 plus in the solution and on the right we would have a zinc electrode with zinc 2 plus ions we would then have a what's called a salt bridge connecting our two electrode cells and then finally a voltmeter between the electrodes. For the standard conditions, all solutions are at one mole per decimeter cubed and it's 298 Kelvin and 25 degrees Celsius. To get the four marks for this question, you get three marks for the correct setup and diagram and then a mark for your standard conditions being correct. Part two, predict the standard cell potential of this cell. If we look at redox systems one and three, well, redox system one, that's going to go backwards because it's more electronegative or the electrode cell potential is more negative. And redox system three is going to go forwards. So when working out standard cell potential of this cell, we would do 0.77 minus minus 0.76 and because it's a minus and a minus, that's a plus, which gives us a value of 1.53 volts, which we will write on our answer line. To get the mark for this part of the question, you need to say 1.53 volts. Part B. In table 22.1, what is the strongest reducing agent and the strongest oxidising agent? So if we look at the most positive electrode potential, the most negative electrode potential, that will help us find the strongest reducing and oxidising agents. The most positive is redox system 4 at 1.51 and the most negative is redox system 1 at minus 0.76. So if we look at these in more detail, re redox system 1, for example, this would go backwards because it's more negative. So it's going to go backwards, so then we're going to focus on zinc. Now, the oxidation states of zinc change from 0 to 2 plus. Therefore, zinc is being oxidized and is a reducing agent because a reducing agent will help oxidization. Then, if we look at redox system 4, that's going to go forwards, so we're looking at MnO4 minus and the Mn is going from an oxidization state of plus 7 to an oxidization state of plus 2. So it's being reduced and therefore is an oxidizing agent. So we'd write that on our answer line for oxidizing agent. To get the two marks for this question you need to write zinc and MnO4 minus. Part C. Electrode potentials can be used to predict the feasibility of reactions. 
construct an overall equation for the predicted reaction between the species in redox systems 2 and 4. So focusing on redox systems 2 and 4, we can rewrite these equations and that will help us to construct an overall equation. If we look at their electrode potentials, the more negative electrode potential is redox system 2. So it will go backwards. So when writing the equation, we would write SO3 2 minus plus H2O goes to SO4 2 minus plus 2H plus plus 2 electrons. And then for redox system 4, it would go forwards as we've established in part B. So if we rewrote it, it would be MN O4 minus plus 8 H plus plus 5 electrons goes to MN 2 plus plus 4 H2O. When writing a redox equa uh, overall equation for these redox systems, you need to look at electrons. So we've got 2 and 5. Therefore, we need to multiply the first equation or redox system 2 by 5. So if we add 5 to each of these, and that would make this H plus 10, and we've got 10 electrons then. And for redox system 4, we need to multiply it by 2. So 2, then 16, then 10 electrons, and then 2 Mn2+, and 8 H2O. So writing our overall equation, initially we would write 5SO3 2 minus plus 5H2O plus 2MnO4 minus plus 16H plus plus 10 electrons in our reactants and that goes to 5SO4 2 minus plus 10H plus plus 10 electrons plus 2MN2 plus plus 8H2O. If I just correct the charges I've written. Okay. Now we need to cancel some of our reactants and products. So this 10H plus and 16H plus would cancel out and make 6H plus for our reactants and then none in our products. The electrons would cancel out and some of the waters would cancel out. These 5, this 8 would turn into 3. Therefore, our overall equation would be 5 SO3 2 minus plus 2 MN O4 minus goes to 5 SO4 2 minus plus 2 MN 2 plus plus 3 H2O. To get the two marks for this question, you need to have the correct and full equation. If you haven't scaled up your electrons properly, that's a mark you lose. So scaling up the electrons and doing all of this cancelling out, that's your mark to get the second mark and your overall equation correct.